Hello and thanks very much for joining me again. Um, what I'm going to do today is have a look at our crank top mill kit. Before I do that I'm going to talk a little bit about sizes. Um, you can tell by the way I'm talking that I am from the UK. In the UK things are a little bit different um, to the US. Now there's an awful lot of kits out there designed and I have to say most of them are designed for the US market uh, because it's much bigger than the UK market. The problem that arises is that in the States they use imperial measurements um, so you will and as we go on I'll explain to you a little bit about the specific measurement because the one that's involved in this is a one and one sixteenth of an inch. Um, but we test, well to be specific I test every one of the kits that um, that we put out on the market to make sure that they're suitable and, and of late we've had quite a few that simply um, are not suitable for the UK, forgive the wasp there, um, not suitable for the UK because they have odd sized drill bits. Um, in the UK um, millimetre drill bits are very easy to get. Um, imperial ones you can get common sizes but the more peculiar sizes if i can if, i don't know whether peculiar is the right word but um, the rarer sizes are more difficult to get and they can also be really quite expensive as an example um, the kit we're going to look at the crank top mill kit um, when i looked for a one and one sixteenth forstner drill bit i was looking at around about 17 to 23 pounds that's rather a lot of money for a kit that costs about six pounds uh, and it makes making it really quite expensive it's not a problem if you're going to make 10 12 20 100 of them um, then it becomes worthwhile but if you only want to make one or two it makes the kit really expensive so what we've done is adapt our kit um, uh, and this is what we call an easy fit kit and i'll show you why now the main difference is this part if you see someone selling a piece that looks like that in a kit that's because they've got a US kit here's the um, the grinder burr it fits in there perfectly here's a scrap of wood that I've got which has got a 25 millimeter hole in it 25 millimeters is a common size dead easy to get either a flat wood bit or a Forstner wood bit that it doesn't fit Quite simply, it doesn't fit, and you need a one and one sixteenth inch drill bit to get that to fit in there. You can do it by hand, but frankly, it's just a bit of a hassle. So, with our easy fit kit, we use this. All this, all this metal bit is, or that plastic bit, is a spring retainer, and all it does is stop the spring slipping up the shaft. Um, so, the way that fits onto there is like so. It clips over just like that and you will find with the same bit of wood it fits straight into a 25 millimeter slot dead easy um, so that's why we call ours an easy fit kit designed for the UK market not the US market um, and if you're in the US well look at you you've got um, all manner of uh, kits and sizes but that's why we call these an easy fit kit and that's the difference um, between fitting that in easily with one drill hole as opposed to having to do a 25 mil hole and then a 27 millimeter hole 27 millimeters is the equivalent to one and one sixteenth of an inch well i'd challenge anyone in the uk to go and get a 27 millimeter drill bit because i've tried to find one and i can't i can find 26 millimeters it won't fit because that's not one and one sixteenth of an inch um, some people that advertise drills will say 26 millimeters in brackets one and one sixteenth of an inch i'm afraid it isn't to be absolutely precise it's 26.98 millimeters but now i'm getting boring talking about measurements let's have a look at what's in the kit and then we'll have a look at how we go to put it together and and just before i do that i will stress that these kits because they're not very big they're great for beginners so if you haven't done any mill kits before these are a great way to start because they only take a small blank and as with most of our kits as long as you're careful with the screws if you make a complete cock of it doesn't really matter you can take it all apart and do it all again and you haven't lost a huge bit of wood let's have a look at the kit so the kit parts look like this and the way that they go together are we have the shaft here with the inner burr we have the outer burr Oops, which goes on like so we have a spring that goes on there 
and we then have our easy fit spring retainer as we talked about earlier that goes oops, on the outside like so um, there's the bottom plate here which you'll see is flat on one side and it has an indentation on the other side the indentation goes uppermost towards the burrs so that provides the um, adjustment on the bottom there the flat bit is on the bottom of the mill um, then there's the top plate like so and then we have the crank handle which is finished in black enamel because we chose this one because we thought it was a nice contrast to most woods uh, and little pear shaped um, knobs and there's the adjuster knob which screws on the top like so and four screws two long ones for the top plate and two short ones for the bottom plate uh, and that's pretty much how it goes together so for this project what we need is an 85 millimeter blank and what I'm actually going to do in this video is show two different methods of how to make the kit. One will be on the lathe, this is the plan anyway, uh, and the other one will be on the pillar drill because as well as being used for turning you can also use this in flat work because there's no round top to be made. So if we need an 85mm blank um, and we're going to make two, we need 170 and I have this piece of U which is 174 millimetres long. So the plan at this point of doing the video is to make two mills. Uh, one will be a round one and one will be a square one. I'll probably just do it roughly um, just to show you the drilling. Um, for the turned one I'm going to use some drills on the lathe but actually you don't have to. Um, I would say you probably do need to use a 25 mil drill for the centre hole but the outer um, holes if you want to you can actually cut them by hand. I use a 38 millimetre force in a bit because I do quite a lot of these and obviously I have to test things and make sure they're absolutely spot on and exactly which drill size is going to fit. What I do um, whilst testing and doing the videos is slightly different to what you guys will do when it comes to making them so you can make them by hand if you want to. Um, I have made these before now with a 25 millimeter drill and all the other cuts just by hand on the lathe when it comes to doing it on the pillar drill obviously because we're not using a lathe then you do need the drills the correct size we'll look at that a little bit later let's um pop this on the lathe um and see how we're going to do it and which bits we're going to attach which bits we're going to cut and in what order we're going to do it so i've essentially got two blanks in the lathe here this one that's up in the jaws um, I'm going to do as a square one. Um, this is going to be the round one. I'm just going to mark, I've measured 85 mils, um, slightly over 85 mils because I can always trim a tiny little bit off. I'm just going to mark that if I can get the square on the block of wood properly. There we go. Sorry if you can't quite see this, but I've got to work this way around. Right, so I've marked my 85mm blank on there um, and it may well be that I'll just actually cut that round just to give me a mark as to exactly where it is that um, I'm going to cut to. I can see on this bit of wood, there's a, just a slight split there, I think I might just cut that with a saw just to make sure I don't split part of this wood off. Um, I'm going to turn this off anyway so that won't really matter. And the first thing I'm going to do is put my 38mm hole drill in this end here. And as always we have instructions available on the website. These are available before you buy the kit so you can have a look at them and see what you're up against. Unlike some suppliers which you don't get one of these until you've actually bought the kit and then you find you need a variety of tools. So we do things a little bit differently. And of course um, you'll find the measurements all on here. You can see the measurements quite clearly here. It says we need a 38mm hole 8mm deep. That is what I'm going to drill on here now. So 
So another tip about uh, these things, when you use um, a force nib bit, let me bring that up so you can see the end of this, when you use force nib bits or indeed flat wood bits, um, it's important that you do the big sizes before you do the small sizes. So I've done the big size and what it's left as you can see there is a little indentation which means I've got a centre for taking the next drill through. If I did it the other way and did the 25mm drill first and then tried to get that centred, well in the lathe it's self-centering but if you came to do it on a, a pillar drill you'll find it, it's not quite so easy uh, and even on the lathe without that point of the drill going in first you're likely to get some movement in the drill bit so it might not be central. Not the end of the world but this is a much easier way of doing it. And you will see now that I've done the 38mm hole, the bottom plate fits in there perfectly. It looks like it goes in too far, but bear in mind we haven't got the grinder section in there yet. The next thing we're going to do is drill a 25mm hole. Now, So we've got a lot of gumph in there at the moment. What I'm now going to do, because I finished drilling this end, is actually turn this round, um, just roughly round, um, and then we'll look at actually parting it off and finishing the lathe version of this. So now if you want to put a little bit of food grade sealer in this end around this end here you can do and finish off the bottom there and as I said before the little curve, if you put a little curve, it doesn't have to be like that bead but any little curve just to take you into the bottom means you can do the bottom and the upper bits separately so if you need to adjust something slightly you can still sand off the bottom and you won't ruin your finish that you've put on the side. It just helps to hide it a little bit because the, the, the edge disappears under the bottom. Now at this point normally what I would do is get uh, my parting tool and part this off on the lathe but because I want this bit as a square piece what I'm actually going to do is take it over to the bandsaw. I'm not going to film that, I'm just going to take it over to the bandsaw and um, slice this bit off um, and then we'll look at remounting that on jaws but the other way around. Now I'm lucky enough I use record chucks um, and these dovetail jaws will just fit when they're fully closed inside there. So we've got that flat and we finish that off so when this part fits on there it should hold it secure and flat and then we can then drill um, correctly in the other end. But I'll just saw this piece off first. Right, so there we go. My drilling wasn't that accurate um, because we haven't got the little point out at the end that I was hoping to get. No matter, we'll mount this on um, and we'll mark the um, centre at this end and then we'll look at drilling or cutting the other ends here. There we go, we can see that's pretty well centred. Um, I'm not going to um, put too much pressure on the expansion, I don't want to split the wood. Um, so it's just enough to, to hold it. And we'll then look at doing the holes in this end. So referring to our instructions again, we can see at the head end we need a 36mm um, mortise and it needs to be 5mm deep. I'm lucky enough that I have got a 36mm drill. You can do this by hand just as easily but for the purpose of whilst I'm filming here I'm going to do it with a drill. It's a little bit easier and I know it's the right size and it would be silly if I didn't have a drill the right size to do it manually but it can be done. And of course you can then just finish it however you want. If you want to remove it, now we've got all the holes cut the right size, it can be mounted between centres if you want to make a jam chuck and, um, or another kind of um, 
chuck so you can turn between centers you can get to all the curvy bits without being in the way of the chuck so I'm just going to finish this off um, off camera and then show you the assembly and then we'll go on to the square one so now onto the assembly now we've got our, our blank here what we're going to do is we're going to take the shaft and the spring we're going to put the outer burr on there like that and the spring retainer like so and make sure that these little feet don't cover these holes because these holes are to allow you to screw uh, this in place so we'll start at the bottom which is that end and we'll start off by pushing those in there like so and we know that fits because we did that before so that fits in there this then can go on next the bottom place that fits in like so and you'll I don't know whether the camera will quite pick that up but you need to get those screw holes in there now what I normally do is mark those with an awl to leave two little marks and I will then drill pilot holes the pilot holes are really really important these are small screws if you don't drill a pilot hole the correct length and the correct size and the correct size is one and a half millimeters these screws will break that's not a fault of the screw because the shaft of that screw is only about one and a half millimeters wide any piece of metal one and a half millimeters wide is not very strong so I'll stress that again, pilot holes, really important, otherwise you'll just break the screws off. Actually, it's the small screws for here. Um, in the other end, we can pop the plate in the top like so, and then we're ready to screw that in place as well, and then do the final fitting of the... Uh, the crank top there and screw on the adjuster so I'm going to mark those pilot holes now and screw them all in and then show you the finished thing so I've drilled my pilot holes and as you'll see because I've been working in the dark this side of the workshop I've accidentally drilled that hole actually in the bottom of the unit there so don't do that I've drilled my pilot holes in there and I've drilled my pilot holes in the top as well the first two ones slipped off the edge so we just moved the fitting round and drilled another two pilot holes so I'm now going to screw um, all the bits in place and it will then be finished so having screwed the top plate in we're now ready to pop on the crank handle like so now if it's not sticking out quite far enough this is looking a little bit tight I'm just going to push that inner burr up with my little finger just slightly just to get a grip on the top there like so and as soon as that's on that's actually really familiar like so and the adjustment uh, is made on the bottom so if I tighten that up you'll see it's pulling the grinder into the center there and the tighter it goes the finer the grind will be from the mill one word of warning don't completely tighten that up because you'll pull the two parts of the burr tight together and if you then try and force it round you might break the ceramic uh, burrs so it always needs a little bit of a gap um, it would need a gap to let the pepper out that's basically the mill ready to be used like so now we'll move on to the square version so for method two, I've got my block here. I've got a 38 millimeter drill bit, 36 millimeter drill bit, 25 millimeter drill bit. I'm gonna start off with 38 on the top. needs to go eight millimeters deep and we'll just have a quick check it looks like it's gone about nine but that'll probably do and then you're going to change the drill bit for 
the 25mm drill bit, but I'm not going to go in very far with the 25mm bit, just a short way, and we're going to meet up in the middle with the 25mm. Another little tip when drilling on the pillar drill, if you'll notice, I've got um, my, my vise here with the block screwed in, the handle is at the back touching the main bar because this is rotating clockwise it wants to spin this that way if it's already hitting there it won't do you any harm if you hold it to the front it probably won't happen on these but if you're drilling anything big and the drill decides to stick in the block what will happen is that will spin round and that might hurt particularly if you've got one of these like me so always put that to the back against there and it stops it moving haven't gone all the way through just a, a little bit of the way through and as you can see this does make quite a mess right the next thing to do is turn it up the other way and attack it from the other side again what we're going to do is the large drill bit first and the small one later so we now need a 36 millimeter bit This needs to go in five millimetres, five or six millimetres. So the measurements aren't all absolutely critical because the kit itself adjusts up and down a little bit. To try and get that drill bit in the middle, because it's looking pretty awful at the moment. That, I have to say, is just a cheap, nasty drill bit because there's nothing wrong with the drill at all. That is just not centering on there at all. deep enough. Yep, that is just spot on. Right. And then we'll get rid of that horrible drill bit. I have to confess, when I used that on the lathe, I wasn't very happy with it. It's easier to see that it's off-centre on a drill. You can't see that on a lathe. Um, and we'll then take the 25mm bit and we'll go through and meet up with the hole we started the other side. That's the plan anyway. There we have basically our blank. What I need to do now is to um, just test the fittings and I need to go and get another kit for that and drill my pilot holes in here and then uh, pop it together. So I've got uh, the outer mill burr here with the easy fit fitting on so I'm going to slot that in the bottom and push that in. Uh, the bottom plate which will go there I'll then mark that with the ore just to make sure we get it screw hole in the right place like 
so the advantage of working on a work table is it's got holes in it so the um, shaft which I've actually forgot to mention you need to put that in there you go slot, slot the shaft in that'll slot through in the holes like so and come out the top and then we can do that and we can mark this section for pilot holes in the top and I'll drill those now and we'll put it together I haven't finished this block of wood it's just completely raw if you like at the moment so we'll just drill those pilot holes we're ready to assemble the kit because when it's all ready to be assembled you can take that off and then I'll actually finish this but I'll just do the pilot holes and show you the fitting of it and how it looks sort of in its rough form There we have, in a very rough block of wood, the crank top mill kit again. Um, so to be honest, it's even easier in a, in a flat bit of wood if you had a decent drill, not like my um, rubbishy one. Uh, and what I'm going to do off camera now is just finish that um, and then we'll see the square one next to the round one. So having done a little bit of sanding and scrabbling around on the floor picking up tiny screws that I have a habit of dropping, I've completed the square one so we now have as you can see a turned one and a square one salt and pepper maybe they're ceramic grinders are suitable for salt and pepper so you could make uh, a differing set like these um, I hope that's been helpful thanks very much for watching um, please come and visit the website and have a look at the range of kits that we've got it's growing all the time we hope one day we'll maybe have a, a range of products to, to match or get somewhere close to what they have uh, in the United States um, thanks for watching see you again soon and as one of my friends used to say to me don't get lost or killed see you next time bye bye